Halloween, 1995, somewhere around 2 a.m. I was absolutely consumed with self-loathing as I made a two-mile walk home from the club. See, me and a few friends had just moved to Los Angeles a few weeks earlier, and we didn't know anybody yet. Earlier in the evening, we had made plans to go out to some club up on Sunset, figuring that, hey, it's Halloween, right? People will be out in their costumes, drinking, having fun. It'll be a good chance to try and meet people. Now, what you need to know about my two friends is that they just happen to be big stoners. Now, I've got nothing against anyone who smokes pot. It's not for me personally, but whatever, teach his own. The problem is that when these guys got lit up, they tended to drag ass a lot. So I specifically asked them, listen, guys, please do me a favor. Don't smoke beforehand. I really do want to go out and try to meet people tonight. And of course, they were like, oh, yeah, no, for sure. Hey, Vinny, believe me, I want to go out and meet people, too. I tell you what, let's do this. Swing by my house at nine. We'll have a few beers and then we'll head out to the club by 10. I'm sure you can see where this is going. Predictably, when I showed up at 9 p.m., their apartment was thick with smoke, and these two idiots were sitting on their beat-up couch playing video games with a bong right there on the coffee table. I didn't want to start an argument, so we all just pretended that the early conversation had never happened. I went in the kitchen, got myself a beer, and then sat down on the couch next to them while they just sat there ripping bong loads playing video games. Once 10 p.m. rolled around, I said, all right, should we head out? Uh, I don't know, dude. Just give me a few more minutes, man. I'm not ready to leave yet. We had some variation of that exchange over and over again for the next two hours. Finally, at midnight rolled around. I stood up and said, guys, enough's enough. We gotta get out of here. They sighed in that super condescending, put-upon way that all great losers do and said, I don't know, man. We're kind of comfortable right here. I think we're just gonna stay in. I wrote Jesus Christ, guys, what are we doing here? I and mean, why the hell did we drive 3,000 miles across country? If you're planning on spending your lives just sitting on a couch, stoned and playing video games, you could have just done that in Jersey. To which they replied, hey man, if you want to go out so bad, go. Nobody's stopping you. Now, you gotta understand, I was very, very shy when I was young. That may be hard to believe now, I know, but back then, I was a natural introvert, and they knew. So the suggestion that I go out to the club by myself wasn't really a suggestion, it was a dick they were taking a shot at me. So I stood up and huffed something super witty like, fine, you will, and then stormed out the door. I'd had a few beers while waiting for these clowns to get ready, so I did have a little bit of liquid courage in me. I figured I'd go to the club, have a few more beers, and mingle a bit, make a few new friends, preferably ones who weren't stoners. But that didn't happen. The truth is, I was just too damn shy. I sat in the corner of the club all night and I spoke to nobody. When the lights finally came on at 2 a.m., I began the long walk back to my crummy little apartment. My route home took me past a gas station somewhere on Highland, I believe. And when I passed, I happened to look up. Standing next to a car and pumping gas was this bored looking blonde chick, about 22 years old or so, wearing a white dress with fake blood splashed all over the front. Before I even realized the words were coming out of my mouth, I yelled, Nicole Simpson! The OJ Simpson murder trial was big news at the time, so I was surprised when she looked up at me and said, Oh my god, you are like the only person who guessed that right all night. One thing led to another, I got her phone number, and we ended up going on a few dates. Nothing much of it really came of it, and for the completely honest, I can't even remember her name today. In fact, pretty much the only thing I do remember in the short amount of time we had together was the fact that she worked as a receptionist in a commercial production company. And one day, while watching me sketch something on a cocktail napkin, asked me the one question that forever changed my life. Have you ever thought about drawing storyboards? That seemingly unimportant, off-handed little question soon led to me discovering that there was a potential career called storyboarding, and soon after that, to me acquiring an agent. I happened to get into storyboarding at exactly the right time. Back then, most people had no idea what a storyboard artist even was. But the following year, they began teaching storyboarding in all the major art schools. And two years after that, the industry was flooded with recent graduates trying to break in. It became much, much harder to get your foot in the door. That was 26 years ago. As I get older, I find myself thinking about that night often, particularly around this time of year. The easiest thing in the world would have been to just slump down on that couch next to my two friends and accept the situation for what it was. If I had done that, I wouldn't have been walking around out in the streets that night. The club was about a two mile walk from my apartment. If I had simply chosen a different route home, I would not have passed that gas station. If I had left the club just five minutes earlier, that girl would not have been there pumping gas at that exact moment that I walked past. I mean, if I had done any one of a dozen tiny, seemingly insignificant things differently, I might not have ever become a storyboard artist. 
I wouldn't have the life that I live today. I wouldn't have been able to afford the house that I live in now. When me and my wife decided we wanted to have children, we very quickly began to understand that we were going to need to go the IVF route. So my first daughter, Rachel, cost me $27,000. My second daughter, Scarlett, cost me $66,000. That's almost $100,000 combined. If I didn't have my career as a storyboard artist, there's no way I would have been able to afford that. Those two beautiful girls, they wouldn't be alive today. And all because I went out that night and happened to take that exact route home at that exact point in time. Life is crazy. In some parallel universe, there's a Vinnie DeLay who's living a very mundane and mediocre life, wondering why it just never came together for him. That poor bastard has no idea of how great his life could have been. Makes you wonder if maybe in yet another parallel dimension, there's a Vinnie DeLay who not only became a storyboard artist, but then made yet another series of seemingly innocent decisions, and today is working as an A-list Academy Award winning feature film director. There's a lesson to be learned in there somewhere, but I've got a couple Barbie doll spots I'm going to draw today, and I've got two beautiful girls that are waiting for Daddy to read them a bedtime story. So I'll leave it to you to unwrap. Sorry that this video was a bit light on actual storyboarding tutorials, but I'm old, I'm feeling nostalgic, and I feel like I've earned the right to battle for a bit. Until next time, this is Vinny Delay with Inky Grow Rich.